And now for the Norma Fleck Award for the Canadian Children's Nonfiction. This award was established in 1999 by the Fleck Family Foundation and the Canadian Children's Book Centre to recognize and raise the profile of exceptional nonfiction books. Most other Canadian Children's Book Prizes either evaluate fiction and nonfiction together or they don't award nonfiction titles at all. So this award is very important to writers who have spent copious amounts of time researching and then figuring out how to best present the facts in an accessible way for young people. So here is a message from the award's founder, Jim Fleck. I am Jim Fleck. The Norma Fleck Award for the best Canadian children's nonfiction book is named in memory of my mother, who lived into her 90s. We're pleased to sponsor this distinct award because Norma Fleck believed in the importance of developing strong reading habits in her children, particularly nonfiction for its fact-based, realistic view of the world as it is. Our logo is a 1915 photo of her as the elder daughter being read to by her mother, Alice, herself a master's level 1899 gold medalist in mathematics at Queen's University. For both of them, nonfiction reading was an essential element in the education of their children. This year, we have five finalists all wonderful books that have been selected by our independent jury from over 50 submitted. The winner will be announced very shortly. Thank you and enjoy your evening. The nominees for the Norma Fleck Award for Canadian Children's Nonfiction, sponsored by the Fleck Family Foundation, are 111 Trees How One Village Celebrates the Birth of Every Girl, written by Rena Singh and illustrated by Marianne Ferrer. Published by Kids Can Press. Crows, Genius Birds. Written and illustrated by Kyla Vanderkloot. Published by First Second. The Eagle Mother. Written by Brett D. Hoosen. Illustrated by Natasha Donovan. And published by High Water Press. Pow Wow, A Celebration Through Song and Dance. Written by Karen Pheasant Nigongwe. Published by Orca Book Publishers. This is your brain on stereotypes. How Science is Tackling Unconscious Bias. Written by Tanya Lloyd Kai. Illustrated by Drew Shannon and published by Kids Can Press. And the winner is. Pow Wow! A Celebration of Song and Dance. Written by Karen Pheasant Nigongawe and published by Orca Book Publishers. Congratulations, Karen. Now, let's take a visit to her home in Calgary receiving that exciting news. How I was celebration through song and dance is the winner. Oh. <laughs> okay. Miigwech. Bonjour, Dante, and greetings to everybody. Thank you for everybody. Thank you for the organizers, the hosts, especially <clears throat> Jimmy Gwedge for this moment in time in Canada. As people in Canada and the world realize what colonialism did to our families, to our communities, it is a vital time to recognize our audacious, brilliant and commanding spirit that was flogged. Regardless, we are in a celebratory mode. Never have we had so many Anishinaabeg Indigenous scholars, authors, educators. We fill every faction of society, being proud of our culture, our stories, and not denying our brilliance. Here we are. I give thanks, gratitude. First, I'd like to thank, full of appreciation for my mother, to my parents who are residential school survivors, my mother who took us on long Saturday morning walks to the local library to seek solitude and escape in our neighborhood library, to all the librarians who value the different stories, to my fellow nominees, Rena, Kyla, Brett, and Tanya, your work is great. To the Children's Book Centre, the Fleck Family Foundation, who recognize that Canada's Anishinaabeg Indigenous people's truth is vital to a society that is healing from colonialism. On that note, also to Orca Publishers and team, Andrew, Kirsty, Olivia, Mary Ellen, 
miigwech to honor the trc calls for action to those who believed in me and put my name forward both richard van camp and late greg younging to Jeanette Armstrong of the Inokwin Center, who looked astonished when I asked her if I could be her one of her writing instructors. And at the time, I didn't have a clue how to put one of my stories into a paragraph or about run-on sentences and normal English isn't verb-based. Thank goodness she didn't accept my second offer, which was to wash floors and do dishes. Miigwech to all the communities who fundraise all year to host our annual celebrations of song and dance to celebrate our resiliency over colonialism, over intergenerational issues, and to keep our families together. Miigwech to all the lodge keepers who keep our ceremonies active and current, too many to name. To my sisters, to my brothers, aunties, uncles, extended family who opened their door to, to me, to my children, no matter what time it was, fed me, loved me, and accepted me without judgment for all the years I was on the Powell Trail. To my English professors who wrangled with my verb-based English and provided the crucial support to get me to understand rhetorical analysis. Most of all, to my late dad, whose stories beheld innate strength, and to my children, Jesse, Matthew, and Sophie, and all of my grandchildren, may these stories empower you. Miigwech, hi hi. Wow.